Hello. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the Firebird database file. I'll go back to the database that we registered in IB Expert in a previous tutorial. We can see it here. And when I click with the mouse and right click to look at the database registration info, here is the database path and directory. We can see here that it is Firebird 2.5 Windows 64-bit Super Classic in the directory Examples Emp Build. And this is where I will find the corresponding database file. The whole database is stored in a single file. Single file is the default setting with which we automatically work in Firebird. When working with older Firebird versions, or its predecessor, Interbase, it was sometimes necessary, and is still today sometimes necessary if you are working, for example, on an older Linux system due to operating system limitations, that there is a maximum file size limit of 2 gigabytes. In such cases, it is possible when creating a database to define secondary files. You can create up to 65,000 secondary files, which with a 2 gigabyte file size limit allows your database to grow up to 128 terabytes. With the more modern Firebird versions, this isn't really a limit, although you may be limited to 60 terabytes per partition, for example on Windows. However, with a maximum of 65,000 partitions, you should have sufficient room, whatever your database size. A huge advantage with Firebird is that we can take this database file and copy it anywhere else. Here, I've simply copied the file into the clipboard using the right mouse button to copy it. And I can now paste it onto any storage medium without having to alter any references or such like in the database file itself. I'll create a new directory here, db, and I'll copy the file into this directory. As I want this copy to be my production database, I can simply rename it. All objects that are in the database, procedures, triggers, tables and indices and so on, are still present in this new database. Then I'll take another copy of this database as my developer version. This will be the version with which we can test IB Expert functions and with which we can then, for example, trace and compare metadata and data differences in the different versions. So, a database file can be stored anywhere and it can be renamed at any time. Even the file suffix FDB is optional. You can name your database however you want which can be advantageous for customer installations where you do not necessarily want an end user to discover the database file and start playing around with it. In fact, there are many environments where Firebird servers are deployed without the users knowing that they are working with Firebird. And that has to be proof of Firebird's quality, that you don't even need an administrator when working with Firebird. When copying databases in this way, what you should never do is to copy a database file while it is open. By this I mean, do not take a copy of a database at runtime whilst people are working on it. Because Windows caching mechanisms can, when taking a copy of a live database, lead to a corrupted database. This is due to Windows technologies and not to Firebird itself. A Firebird database cannot be easily corrupted, although you can provoke it, particularly, for example, when working intensively with blob operations and then switching the server off all during the copying process. Otherwise, Firebird databases are extremely robust. So, of course, I now need to register both these databases in IB Expert. In the Database Explorer right-click menu, I simply select Clone Registration Info. 
so the employee database registration details have now been copied. And I can now change any of these registration details as wished. So I will change the path to C, F, B, D, B and select the F.FBD, my developer version, and name it Employee Dev. I'll leave all other details as they are. And here I can see the database in the Database Explorer. Now I am going to take the other copy of the database, which will represent my production database. Prod.FDB and, don't forget, the alias name is for IB expert use only. So, I can now access both databases and, as I have entered the username and password in the database registration, I can connect to them both simply by double-clicking on the database alias names. Now, I am ready to start work on the databases. Thank you for taking the time to watch this film. We hope you have learned something new and will continue to view our forthcoming series of tutorials. Goodbye from all of us at IB Expert.